Maxine hook to the body. What's up? This is Conrad, uh, GOG Boxing, Grumpy Old Geezer Boxing. And uh, today we're going to talk about something which may be somewhat controversial. Uh, we're going to talk about the Mexican hook to the body. The lead hook in the Mexican style to the body. Now, I know this is controversial. I don't want to get into like misappropriation of culture or anything like that. But a friend of mine, his father taught me this. Uh, he was a Mexican-American and his brother's a Mexican-American. And so I kind of grew up with it. And these are the things that were taught to me. And actually, when I kind of scanned around on YouTube, I didn't see anybody explaining this. I see people sort of try to throw these hooks um, that, uh, that are not of, say, Mexican-American heritage and uh, maybe try to show people and, and there's a lot of dangers in there. It, it's a little bit of a risky move, okay? Now, I apologize because I, I don't have my mic on again today because I don't want to squeak around. I'm, I'm going to get a radio mic soon, maybe even this week. We'll see. But let's talk about it. Let's just talk about the hooks to the body to begin with. Now, if you're a beginner, okay, you need to learn how to do normal hooks, right? And a normal hook to the body. Now, we've talked about getting something on your hook, which is, remember how we did with the jab? So, we did the toe, the knee, the hip, the shoulder, the toe, right? And then we talked about getting, getting something on the jab by getting that looseness, that toe, that knee, that hip onto the jab. And the same thing with the hook. The toe, the knee, the hip, and then this kind of hook, not that kind of hook, okay? Not that kind of hook. Now, if you want to do that kind of hook, great, but we talked about another video, and you can do it how you like, how you like. But let's talk about hooks to the body, and chiefly we're going for the liver. Here's my liver, right? So if I'm standing this way, I'm trying to find that liver, right? You get hit in the liver, and it really hurts. I mean, it sort of it, it cramps you over, you think you could stand up, you can't. Trust me, you can't. So it's a great target, okay? Now, if you're gonna throw just a, a traditional uh, left hook to the body in, in a standard, you know, standard traditional form, not a Mexican hook to the body, it's it's not your it's uh it's really your your body is vertical in the sense that you might be here, you're in a stance. Now, as we talked about, I like more weight on the back foot. And maybe you slip under a punch and then bam, right? You twist it under, bam. Or maybe even you slip under a punch here, bam. But you see, my, my body is pretty vertical. And you'll see, like, for example, in, in the Irish and the UK schools of boxing and in European school, that's in, and also in the US and amateur boxing. Guys be fighting, they'll, they'll, they'll get under and do that hook. They might slip and do that hook, okay? And that is really, if, you know, if you're beginning, I would say that's what you need to focus on first, okay? But let's talk about this Mexican hook because people try to throw stuff. And let's talk about the dangers of it and why it actually works pretty cool, but what not to do, okay? And, and what to do to try to make it work. Now, this works for me. If you have a coach who doesn't like it, listen to your coach. Uh, if you have a, a, a Mexican coach who's telling you, do this and don't do that, you listen to him, okay? But for those of you that don't, and a lot of you don't, this is the way that I was taught in the, in the way I approached it, and it works for me. And after this, we'll go down to the white trash gazebo and throw some punches, and you'll see that I, I get some pop on it, and, uh, and I'm an old guy. If I can do it, you can do it, right? So, here we are. Now, if we're in the stance, and I like the high guard stance, okay? It's because if somebody, I can slip, I can still get my elbows down to take these shots, right? And if I'm too slow because I'm getting old, I've got some defense already there. And I don't have so many decisions to make. You might want to be in a regular boxing stance, okay. But I'm going to approach this from a high guard stance. So here we are. Now, the key to the Mexican hook to the body, when I talk about that, I'm thinking like Canelo. Saul Canelo Alvarez. Look at his, his you, I think there's a video on YouTube, Routes to the Body, okay? The key is, let me back up so you can see my feet, is you don't want, where if you were, if you were looking at a more traditional hook, something you might be able to go straight down under and bam. Now, if you're going to do a hook to the body traditionally, what you don't want to do is don't get down and just throw the hook because look, 
if somebody's pressuring you, you got it. They got you, right? You, you left yourself open. So in a traditional hook, you're here, you're moving, you get down, bam, or maybe you slip and then bam, right? You slip and you kind of get down, but you got to get down low because you're going to the body. Okay. The difference with the Mexican hook to the body is that here you are, here you are, and what you're going to do is you're going to tilt this axis of your shoulders over, right, to get the hook. But if you are here and you just tilt over to get the hook and that weight's on your front foot, and you didn't, you just tilt straight over, and you try to look, you, look, your momentum's going this way, if he hits you on this side, even if it's not a good shot, you're going over, you're gonna, he's gonna score a knockdown on you, right? So, how do you, you know, you can try it, stand here, tilt your, get your shoulders over, and then uh, somebody can push you over, a feather could push you over, and you lose your balance. So the key is this, okay? At least this works for me. Okay, and this is how I was taught. When you're here and you got your front foot, I like mine pointed a little bit more forward, my back foot a little bit out. I'm starting to get into kind of more of a traditional stance, but right now, but okay. If you're in a traditional stance, okay, uh, but you're here, okay, and then you want to do the Mexican hook, okay. You're going to, you are going to get your axis over your axis, but I mean your shoulders. You got to take a little step and open up your hips. Now it will feel, look at my front foot, it will feel like you're turning your foot out like that, but you're not. It's just kind of what it feels like. You're, but you are going to have to open your hips a little bit and, and when you step over and your weight is going onto your front foot. This is one of those exceptions in boxing. Okay? Now look what happens. If you're just here, and you don't take that little step and open your hips and you turn over, you have no balance at all. You're gonna, you, somebody hits you, you're going over. Maybe Canelo can do it. I, I have seen him do it without taking any steps at all. But Canelo's a master. But if you're here, and when you take that little step and open your, your hips, right, and you tilt your body, you are actually still, you got, you do, your weight did shift to that front foot. And, but you kept that little step, opening your hips, you kept your head from going way out over your knee, okay, and you actually still have some balance and some stability. Now, it's not perfect stability, you know, everything comes at a cost. Here, I'm much more stable than when I do that little step, but the reason I'm doing it is... You are throwing a, maybe you throw a punch, I slip it, I take this little step, I open my hips, and you'll see my back foot, my, my heel is up, so I take the little step, open my hips, and then bam. Now, let's talk about a couple of things there. Well, first of all, let's turn here. If I were throwing a regular hook, okay, here I am, I might throw, bop, I threw a, a, a straight right. Now you see my back heel, I throw that hook, bam, my heel goes flat, this knee turns, everything turns, my, my body's last, okay? If I was doing a hook to the body more traditionally, right? I drop down, bam, see my knee, my knee turned, bam, okay? This is actually much, of it is the same context. Now, one thing is, and this also goes back to kind of the Kenny Sheldon school of boxing from back in Texas when I was a kid and I had, uh, I went to like, a, I went to a camp and uh, I also had some guys teach me this. When you're throwing a low body shot, you can your hand can be more like that, mid more like this, but high like that. You want you don't want people to you don't want the coach the, the judges to call you for slapping, okay? And you know that I like to turn my hand over. This with the Mexicans a little bit of exception with this Mexican hook, because it's gonna be from down here. Now, so here we are though. Let's talk about this one. Here we are, we're in our stance. We we slip, we open our hip, take a little step out. That's when we move our shoulders over, okay? I'm actually, you'd be surprised. Now, I'm exaggerating a tiny bit, keeping my hands up. Now, look what happens. When I do that punch, bam, okay? Now, it is dangerous. I'm not saying it's not. But I'm going to come back on this back heel, okay? So, I'm here. I came over. Bam, I came back on this back heel. Okay? Now, you don't always have to come all the way back. And if you watch, say, Canelo fight, what he'll do is he'll come, he'll do that little step, 
and bam, and he actually isn't coming all the way back, but he is pulling. He is pulling. And you can see it on that. It maybe didn't come all the way back to the back heel, but let's just be simple first. So here we are, right? We take the little step, open our hips. We get our shoulder, this shoulder down, this shoulder up. My, my hand is still here on my head. And then, bam, I do that hook. I can even bam and bounce it and come back out. There's a lot of things you can do off it. Now, if I were standing here, look, here I am. Most of my weight's on my back foot. I like to fight the high guard, high guard. Here, I, I, maybe I threw a jab, I set it up, or maybe I just slip. I do that little step out to the side, step out to the side. My shoulder comes down. This heel is up in the, in the back. Most of, most of my weight's on my front foot for just a second. And then I pull it back, right? Let's talk about what happens very quickly if I did it, didn't do that with my hand glued to my head, right? Watch what happens. If I'm here, even if I did the little step, but let's say I'm in a traditional stance right here, and then I do this, and my hand starts floating, okay? Kind of it's in nowhere land, and, I, and I'm gonna, I'm, I haven't stuck my head way out. I've taken the step, I've opened up my hips. But what, what happens when I, when I throw it? I mean, I'm so crazy wide open that it's insane. This hand will lose, it doesn't know where to be. Okay, so even if you're in a normal boxing stance, if you want to throw that Mexican hook, my advice is when you take that step, get your other hand up. And then, bam, you come back. So at least you're covered on that one side. Okay, uh, you, you're going to, you, you know, a lot of times when you throw a Mexican type hook, let's say you throw one, two, three. One, two, I hooked. I came down. I, see, I took that little step out. I hook it again. Now I might slip and spin out, or if I, 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 I did the same, one, two, three, I, I did this little step out, so I didn't even do it that time, I'm getting sloppy already, yeah, so one, two, three, stepped out to do the Mexican hook, right, then I pop it, bam, follow up with something, what you don't want to do, you know, is just stick it and then hesitate, you really don't want to do that after any punch. Okay, yeah, I, some guys you'll see them, they're fighting, bam, they land, they land a straight right, and they're like, man, and they stop. They think the guy's gonna drop. People don't always, a lot, most of the time they don't drop, right? Then they get hit. But, well, so back, let's talk about it again. Here we are. We want, we, here we are. This is a normal hook. I'm getting my body down under a punch, and then I'm hooking, down, hooking, right? Down, hooking, right? Because I'm getting my body down. I might slip, hook, but my body's really dropping. Mexican hook, make sure. Here we are, we're in the stance. Little step, open up my hip, get my shoulders over. This hand stuck to my head, bam. Now, last piece of advice before we go down to the white trash gazebo to practice some of these things is, you know, you hear the saying, don't hook with a hooker, right? So if you get in there with a guy who just throws tons of hooks, sometimes they're brawlers, sometimes they're more even like a Joe Fraser type. You start hooking with him, if that's his specialty, you're, you're, you may catch him, but he's going to catch you. Same thing with this. Don't Mexican hook with the Mexican hooker because you'll catch something. Boy, that sounds bad. They mean it sound like that. Uh, but if you're, you're in here, right, and look what happens. I've got to keep this hand glued. This will also keep, it will, help, it seems weird, but it'll help your balance. Uh, so when I, I'm going and I'm fighting, and maybe I throw a combo, and then I try to do that Mexican hook, right? Now, look, look what's open. Look what's open, okay? If you get in with a guy who is great, who's faster than you even, he may hook you right to the liver when you try to pull it. So this is not something to just go in there and try to do until you have practiced it and practiced it and practiced it. And we'll talk about some things, ways to practice this first on your own, then with a partner. But here's a couple of combos to think about, a couple of things to think about. You're gonna do, if you're going to try to do a Mexican hook, you need to set it up with something. You might, you might do a fake and come down. You might do a one-two, because that practically gets you in the position to throw it, right? Because then, bam, we got to get your hand back here, right? you got to get your hand back if you do that, that one. Because when you throw that one, you just do the step out on the two, 
and then you're already there, okay? You might do a one, two, three, a one, two, three, and then do that step out, open your hip up a little bit, get your shoulder over, and do it. I'm going to do this side. Here we go. Yeah, I could do a fake, step out, do, I'm, I'm over, right? I'm not sticking my head way out on my cheek. You know, it might go even with my knee, maybe it might go a hair over it, but you don't want to get where you're putting your head out over your knees. So I, I'll go, I might go a one, or I might go a fake, and get, take that little step out, put my hip up, hands here, bam, twisting back, but do something after you do that hook, or even, you know, do a hook, two hooks, or a hook, spin out something, don't, don't just do it and sit on it, right, or a one, two, so, a one, two, but on that, see, I did, I did the jab, but then on that two, I, I got my step, I got my step, and then, bam, right? It's a little bit of a dangerous technique, okay? It's not something to just go in there blindly. You need to think about it, you need to practice it. But the key is that little step. Now, we're not exaggerating. We're not going like this. We're not going, even if we step, we're not going way over like that. You don't need to. You don't need to. You will see in a minute when we go down on the bags that one problem with just working on a heavy bag on the Mexican hook, if you don't have a friend, is that when you hit it, and you, you, you would think it wouldn't be that this way, but that tiny step, you'll see you'll go past the bag. You'll easily reach past the bag, okay? The best way to practice is if you have a, a coach, a good coach that's got hand pads and has got like a body guard for his stomach, and he can practice these things with you. So, so it would be like a one, two, three, and then he'll fake a right, you'll go to this side and hit him in his liver, but he's got the big pad. That's the best way. But I'm going to show you how to do it on the heavy bag, okay, and to get some timing, and actually on a Mexican double-ended bag where you can practice, you can practice that Mexican hook, you know, after combinations to, to get you ready for it, okay? I hope that was clear. I hope that was clear. I hoped it helped. It, it sounds simple with that little step out and getting your your shoulders over, but you'll see at first it'll feel weird. Later it'll feel great, and you'll be able to do it really quick, and you'll be surprised how much power you get out of it when you come back on it, right? Okay, let's go down to the to the white trash gazebo and see how it goes.